Welcome my friends, today we'll embark on a small side mission quickie. I'll be reacting to the latest Napoleon trailer. You know me, it's a historical movie, I was super excited until I watched the trailer. So let's see what key moments of his life they decided to focus on. With that being said, there will be some spoilers. Because I mean, it's a historical movie, right? Allegedly! Alright, first scene, historically accurate, Napoleon in Egypt. He landed there with an expeditionary force in 1798. And since he considered himself a spiritual descendant of Alexander and Julius Caesar, Egypt had a special place in his heart. Oh no! Catastrophic. Come on, Ridley! Come on! We're one second into the trailer! And you just shove all this BS right in our face. And everyone, at least this movie was not produced by Netflix. <laughs> Otherwise, this would have been the cover of the movie. I know it's sad when we're at the point to celebrate such things, but it's a still a win. Hold on. Is it me or the scene has some serious Assassin's Creed Unity vibes. Alright, my sus radar has been activated. We have a guillotine. 1793. An older woman. I think this event depicts the execution of Marie Antoinette, the wife of King Louis XVI. Now, with everything we know about what happened, I'm a bit disappointed by this depiction. Because once again, I feel it's like a video game. Is it me or it feels very chaotic? Feels like a football match with all these waving flags. Now compare what you just saw in the trailer with this scene from a very accurate French movie called The French Revolution celebrating the 200th anniversary of the French Revolution. Anyway, you see how everything is organized. It's almost like a ceremony. We must make an example. Our France will fall. What would you do if this assignment of defense was transferred to you? Alright, so right off the bat we see that they'll put a special focus on the early years of Napoleon Bonaparte's rise to power. So this is clearly the royalist insurrection that took place in October 1795, or the 13th Vendémiaire according to the revolutionary calendar. If we zoom in we can see multiple traditional French royalist flags. So you have the white one with a lot of fleur de lis on it, you have the blue one, and the blue red white one with the cross at the center. One thing I noticed too is how in Ridley Scott's depiction, the crowd is unarmed like an angry mob of protesters. Now I wasn't there. However, if we take into account that roughly 100 revolutionary soldiers of the convention were either KIA or wounded, the rebels were most likely armed. Even the TV show Napoleon from 2002 did it better. And you know it's quite an achievement when you get to that point. Essentially this rebellion brought Bonaparte to the top. It was the last real attempt by the royalists to regain power in France. Six years after the start of the French Revolution. Oh! So that also means that this man we see right here is Barras, who was dating Josephine before Napoleon Bonaparte took her as a wife. Alright, so the movie decided to go down that route. Alright, it's gonna get very spicy. So Bonaparte, as an artillery officer, pressed the idea to suppress the insurrection using cannons. A pretty extreme measure. He placed them at every street corner that would lead to the convention, the general assembly. He fired a canister shot at close range right into the crowd next to the St. Rock Church. That night, 300 royalists are believed to have died. Because of this event and his dirty job, he was nicknamed General Vendémiaire. Basically, he was mocked for his bloodlust. I promise you brilliant successes. Come on! And now we have Napoleon Total War vibes. Okay, the movie is literally a video game. We can even see the awkward spacing between each man that is equal CGI CGI 
this depiction of Napoleon seems a bit crazy psychotic. Like the Joker playing dress up, you know? <laughs> Let's be honest, Bonaparte was a hot-blooded Corsican. He was energetic, he was charismatic, emotional, prone to a lot of ups and downs. This Napoleon seems depressed. And he hasn't even started his career. With that being said, cool grenadier uniform. Yeah, that, that's all I had to say. this costume you have on? This is my uniform. In France, most careers are determined in such environments. Even to this day. I think this depicts one of Barras's many famous parties. Although I think they kept it PG-13 for the movie. He organized parties and invited the most beautiful woman of the city. Where the word married was only an adjective to someone's personality. And one of these women was Rose of Beauharnais which you remember as Josephine. Diversity check, oh yeah. Jokes aside, it could have been possible. Highly unlikely, but historically plausible. So oh my god, I can't. I swear I used the same tactic in Napoleon Total War. However, not realistic at all. Good luck. Climbing ladders with your musket under enemy fire. <laughs> this is so dumb. Now, quick pause. This soldier here wears the model 1791 helmet, which was effectively used during that period, mostly by light infantry and cavalrymen. Is it important to the story? Maybe not. But it's really the only video where I can flex my Napoleonic era knowledge. I love the French victory at Toulon. Okay, so all this actually depicts the siege of Toulon, 1793, Napoleon's first real taste of battle, where he stood out for his courage and saved a siege that was about to fail. And it's pretty historically accurate, we see the French cannons then bombarding the British Navy in the harbor. Now, if we go back to the latter assault, there is this one depiction I found online which I think is much more realistic. What happened is that the French brought their cannons as close as possible to the British forts and bombarded it at close range with mortars. They even managed to place some bombs right next to the wall, followed a massive explosion. And then, just like in the movie Kingdom of Heaven, once the breach was created, all the French troops swarmed into the fortress. Which to me is much more logical and much more epic. But the fact that this movie messes up this battle scene, not gonna lie, makes me worried. What is your name? Napoleon. Has the course of my life just changed? Napoleon. Oh, uh, no, no, no. He would have said Bonaparte, that's your last name. General Bonaparte. People only called him Napoleon much later. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's only after he was crowned emperor as Napoleon I that people actually called him Napoleon. Destined for greatness. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be a joke. You see me laugh, but I'm actually crying inside. Fun fact, this is the most Google thing right now. Did Napoleon fire at the pyramids? No, he didn't. All right, strike two, but nice PR stunt. Ridley? Nah, for real, what is the purpose of adding this? Here's a painting done in 1806 about the Battle of the Pyramids. Notice how the pyramids are in the background and how far they are from the actual battlefield. As a matter of fact, the battle took place a good 17 kilometers away from the pyramids. A little three hour walk. And this is the result of a five minute Google search. That means they purposely change history for clout. All right, Ridley, second uh, battle scene you mess up. Hmm, I, I'm not sure which battle this could be. I mean, <laughs> this could be anyone. But, big round butt. We clearly see that this is CGI. Poorly done CGI. This is absolutely not how a cavalry charge would have happened. The entire purpose with the cavalry was to use the weight of the horse like a bulldozer. 
they would attack in compact formation side by side and use the power of their horses like a battering ram into enemy lines. But here, nope, they're all spread out. I threw a quick jab at Napoleon Total War earlier, but I have to admit, the Total War series is much more accurate. Yeah, so very excited. Third battle that he messes up. Power will only see me as a sword. What? The actual A few moments later. I give up. I give up. I can't. Ridley, enough. Take your movie back to the editing room. Do not release this. Can someone name me a battle where Napoleon actually charged like that? On top of the fact that he was known to be a very bad horse rider. The only trace I could find of such an event was during the siege of Toulon. He first led the attack on horseback. Mark my words, led the attack. Not charged at full speed. And then his horse was shot under him. So Bonaparte continued the assault on foot. Where he was later wounded by a British soldier in the leg with a halberd. So my guess is that this scene is part of the siege of Toulon. I suggest you take the throne. Here's something I'm very happy to see. Young extras, just like Napoleon's soldiers. And not what you could find in some reenactments. Yeah. There's a king. Shall we vote? So that depicts Bonaparte's coup of the 18th of Brumaire in 1799 which was effectively carried out by the guard. So yeah, Napoleon did crown himself emperor in 1804, and this was perceived as an insult for most of the kings of Europe, that this nobody crowns himself emperor and believes he's at the same level as them. No, no. This. All right, this must be the Battle of Waterloo. I saw some British flag, rainy weather, big green fields. Shout out to my subscribers from Belgium. Berlin has held the world hostage. Okay, the squares. Definitely the Battle of Waterloo. Now, you know me, I'm a history geek, so I have to pay attention to details that nobody would actually care about. You see, at Waterloo, the squares were manned by 500 troops each, four ranks deep. Whereas here, it's about 200 men in three ranks. Probably they did that for budget reasons, so they could get two squares at once in the shot. However, one major mistake they did, and I'm highlighting major, is that British squares were typically positioned in diagonal, like on a checkboard. Logically, so they could avoid friendly fire. Whereas here in the movie, they're literally side by side. Anyway, it will be very interesting to compare Ridley Scott's portrayal of the Battle of Waterloo with the movie of Bondarchuk from 1970. With his egotism. That's probably the burning of Moscow after Napoleon's campaign of Russia. I'm still impressed by how large they're going, so they're literally covering his entire life. And his lack of simple good manners. <laughs> Napoleon wasn't really remembered as a fantastic lover. Believe me. Actually, he was much more in love with Josephine than she was with him, at least in the beginning. During the Battle of Arcol, the famous battle where he charged over a bridge, well, when he was at the rear at the camp, while dodging cannonballs, he was writing her love letters while she was spending nights with another officer. I think you're great. You are just a tiny little brute. There is nothing without me. Stop the cap. I don't know if they'll show this in the movie, but at some point there was a huge beef between Napoleon and Josephine. Essentially, she couldn't have kids and she kept blaming him, toxic trait. Meanwhile, Napoleon's family blamed her infertility because of her party years. In 1806, Napoleon had an affair with an 18-year-old French girl called Eleonore. And surprise, surprise, he got her pregnant. And this made him furious because that proved that he was not to be blamed. He was not infertile. And he literally threatened to divorce Josephine. 
since he didn't have an heir, he wanted to adopt his son, but that wasn't possible. So he just made sure Eleonore and his son lived a very comfortable life. So I did some research and found out that Leon lived until 1881. That's insane. A direct descendant of Napoleon. How many more of his descendants are just roaming in France? Although these would have been welcomed in 1940. Jokes aside, three of Napoleon's direct descendants were killed during World War I. All right, detective mode. Here on the map, we can see Paris. We see a British flag, Prussian, Austrian. He says all Europe is against him. This is most likely Napoleon preparing the campaign of Waterloo. Hit the Prussians first and then fall back on the British and Allied troops. Forces against me. What's the outcome? Okay, we see Austrian grenadiers, a mountain in the background, some fog, winter like weather. I place my bets on the Battle of Austerlitz. If this, you don't succeed. Your Majesty, we are discovered. Good. Okay, confirmed this was the entire strategy of Napoleon during the Battle of Austerlitz. Napoleon's forces appeared weak, so he could bait the Austro-Russian forces down the hill. First to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Yeah, this episode of the battle is tragically famous. At the end of the battle, when the Russian forces were trapped, thousands tried to escape through a frozen swamp. When, just like in the movie, the French artillery fired at them, breaking the ice beneath them. Okay, so at least this battle seems to respect the lore. Conclusion. The main battles will be the Siege of Toulon, the Revolt in Paris, Austerlitz, the Campaign in Russia, and Waterloo.